So what does it mean to be a good human? This is a question that has been asked for ages. It seems that in many ways the idea of ethics, the idea of morality are very, very relative concepts that either rely on the context of the situation you're in, perhaps your upbringing, perhaps your social values, perhaps your own core values. There are so many variables, many of which you don't even have control over, that dictate what it means to be good or what it means to be bad. For example, we have a strong social rule against murder. However, if you're at war, you're supposed to kill. And in fact, you are rewarded for killing. You are considered to be successful only if you kill other human beings. And this is an extreme example, but you can see this kind of relativistic morality uh, across the spectrum of human behavior in society. But I wanted to tackle this question because I think it's actually an extremely important one. And the reason is that as we pursue building Brojo and as we pursue the concepts of self-development and the concepts of becoming a better person, we need to define what we're aiming for. And as I think about this, as I've, as I've thought about the way my life has gone and the way that human lives are structured, and I look at the concepts, the challenges that Brojo members have and what they're aiming for and why this concept, this question surfaces again and again. And I think I actually have an answer that makes an enormous amount of sense to me and is very simple to apply to your life. And I wanted to share it. I wanted to, to, to uh, basically write it down, record it, and share it and get your feedback on it and see how you feel it applies to you. So I'm going to start with a foundational principle here, a postulate, if you will, that something, anything in our universe is most successful, uh, it can only be most successful in anything it does if it is working according to its design. There it is always going to be most efficient and it's going to be, in a sense, fulfilling its purpose. A simple example is, if I want to hammer in a nail, I can use a wrench to do it, but it's going to be difficult. It's an imperfect tool for that job. And a wrench does not make a particularly good hammer. It's probably not going to hammer in that nail as well as another tool would. It could be said then that a wrench can't fulfill its purpose if it's being used as a hammer, but it makes a spectacular wrench. A hammer, by contrast, does a fantastic job at hammering that nail in. It's not really going to be able to help you fix those pipes. So what we're talking about here is the concept of uh, design-driven purpose. The concept that the way something is constructed has a lot to say with, has a lot to say about uh, how it is most successful in its existence. Uh, a hammer isn't that successful if it's sitting in the toolbox all day. If it's out getting good use, hammering in nails, being reliable, being productive, uh, improving the world in some way, then that can be said to be um, a successful hammer. Okay. The reason I start from this point is that human design is, is very intriguing. On the one hand, um, if you look at evolution, we share a lot in common with other animal species. We even have a reptilian brain, which is about, which is focused on and designed for our survival, focused on reproduction of the species, focused on the survival of our species and ourselves as individuals. Pretty simple. Run away from danger. Um, have sex when the opportunity arises to reproduce. Um, don't die. Eat when we're hungry. Uh, it's, it's a pretty simple mind. Those goals are important to our success, to the success of a reptile. But we are part reptile, which means that 
our success depends on achieving these goals as well. Us achieving these goals is our best utilization of that part of our design. At the same time, we're also mammals. Mammals have a slightly expanded design in the sense that uh, mammals added to the reptilian brain a number of special features around socialization, social creation, pair bonding with oxytocin, raising their young, protecting their young, um, forming relatively long-term relationships where they could raise the young and produce more offspring, good social structures which allow them to gain more resources and protect the resources that they have, including their own personal safety. So there were a lot of advantages here. Now, humans are mammals too. And that means quite simply that for us to be successful humans, we also need to be successful at these same things. The best we could be as human is to be good at relationships, relationships is to be good at social skills, is to be good at finding a partner, is to be good at protecting and raising our children, our offspring, if we should have any. Uh, so you can see that being both the reptile and, and the mammal is an important part of being a successful human based on our design. At the same time, we're more than that. We're also human, and that means we have our human rational mind, which can solve problems, which can imagine the future, which can create amazing things which can create emotional things as well, such as art, music, poetry. Um, we can imagine the future, we can improve the future, we can be self-aware. We can, interestingly, we can even override the impulses of our mammal brain or our reptilian brain for survival in pursuit of something larger where we might sacrifice our own life because it's important to the future of humanity. Something along these lines, right? Uh, the concepts of sacrifice, right, for the greater good is, is a common theme in, in, in cinema, even, in books. So we've got at least three different layers of important design, important behavioral design, about how we are meant to be most effective as an organism. And my argument is that for us to be a good human, we need to embrace all three of those layers as simultaneously as we can. We want to do our best to survive as individuals. That's part of our success as a human. At the same time, we want to be protective over our social groups, over our families, over our children, to be a good member of society where we can benefit our group and they can benefit us in return. That is beneficial to us as well and also represents success as a human. At the same time, we need to be able to create, to imagine things beyond our own lives, beyond our own understanding, beyond our own worlds, and to lead humanity somewhere better using the power of our rational cognitive brain. And all of these parts should be part of our pursuit. I hope this gives you something to think about, and I'm very curious if you have any comments on what ideas this sparks for you in your own life. If you reflect on where there may be weaknesses in how you are pursuing your own self-development. Is there an area that you're missing in your personal growth? If there is, why? And what could you do to improve upon that? What would your life look like if that area were stronger? some challenging thoughts for you. They've certainly been challenging thoughts for me.